Hey guys, it's Ben from So Is It Any Good. Today we're talking about T2 train spotting. Choose life, choose Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and hope that someone somewhere cares. There was a part of me that really didn't want to like this film. The original is so iconic, such a lightning in a bottle moment in British cinema. But this new installment never tries to top the original. Instead, it does something quite different from what we're used to with traditional movie sequels. And if anything, it enhances the original rather than tarnishing its memory. I missed you, mate. I missed you too, Spud. She was looking up old flames, wishing you'd done it all differently. Do you still take heroin? No. So let's talk about the story. It picks up with Renton returning to Edinburgh for the first time since the events of the end of the first movie, where he essentially left his mates high and dry and took off with a bag of drug money. Hello, Mark. So what have you been up to for 20 years? When the film starts, you're not quite sure why exactly Renton's come back and started reconnecting with all these people from his past, which obviously include Spud, Sick Boy, and the psychopath Begbie, who's actually now locked up in jail. The true reasons for his return kind of slowly boil to the surface as Renton falls back in with his old gang and sure enough, back into old habits. I can't fail again, Mark, and I need to detox the system. Oh, Spud, detox the system. What does that even mean? It doesn't mean anything. It's not getting it out of your body that's the problem, it's getting it out of your mind. You are an addict. I think I haven't heard that a hundred thousand times, Mark. The genius of Danny Boyle and his returning screenwriter, John Hodge, is that they embrace the nostalgia head on. So it's a part of the movie, it's, the, it's part of the DNA of the film. Characters reminisce about events from the first movie in the same way the audience does. And of course, the soundtrack is kick-ass. And we've kind of come to expect that from Danny Boyle. But there's such a great mixture of tracks on here. There's old retro hits, there's new indie up-and-coming bands on there, film music from Bond films, which is obviously bit of a reference to the sick boy character who's obsessed with Bond. But there's also some great remixes and reprises of probably the most two well-known tracks from the first film, Born Slippy and Lust for Life. They're kind of woven through the whole film and this is the kind of movie you're going to walk out of and you're going to want to listen to that soundtrack immediately. So summing up, T2 train spotting, it's funny, it's surprising, it's energetic, and it's pretty emotional at times as well. Perhaps the biggest compliment you can say about the film is that it's the perfect companion piece to the original. And it reminds you just why you love these characters so much in the first place. So, is it any good? Uh, Yes. <laughs>